the mind's potential lies beyond the realm of thought. Welcome to the Being Now podcast. In episode seven, we'll be building on last week with the topic, Getting Closer to Reality. So in the spirit of the show, Chris, uh, how did that kind of play out for you in the, well, we, we took a week off for Thanksgiving, so in the past couple of weeks, I suppose. Yeah. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. I'm getting over another cold. Um, I had a lot kind of happen in the past two weeks with moving into a new apartment and just a lot of you know, the holidays at work are always crazy and stuff. So um, there was a lot of opportunity for me to kind of escape my reality a little bit by, by getting like really caught up in my thoughts mm -hmm. and how like I want the day to just be over so I can go home and just relax or how I, you know, just want to finish moving everything in the new apartment just because I'm tired from working all day and now I got to move. And one thing that I, that really helped me was I, I had to sit and meditate on it for a little bit because I kind of noticed it happening. I just kind of gave myself the excuse and I know that's not healthy for me to do. So I meditated on it and I had to find ways to help keep me out of my head and my thoughts and be more present and enjoy my work experience even though it's crazy busy and enjoy the moving process because it is an exciting moment and I'm not enjoying it as much as I could be because I'm caught up in my head on how I just wish you know the the movements could all be over and I can just relax again but yeah meditation definitely helped with that a lot and being present and appreciating that present moment so how about you? Well, I had a, a similar kind of experience uh, to a point. I, you, you had said uh, feeling like you're waiting for the day to be over so you can go to re uh, relax or whatever. And um, I caught myself doing some of that too. And the, the thing that I kind of got out of it was, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's contrary to the entire – living in the moment thing that kind of uh, kick-started this whole process off for my for me anyway. And so I just kind of took myself back to that and and kind of remembered. <clears throat> and after that, it wasn't too much of a problem. But, you know, I actually had a couple things go wrong. Um, my, my car needs a, a part fixed on it, and I was going to go down to Oklahoma. And... Uh, you know, I got about halfway to Wichita, which is about a half hour down the road. And, and I knew it was time to turn back. So I haven't been able to drive my car lately, but I get the part in the mail tomorrow and I'm going to put it on myself. And, uh, you know, nowhere during that process, uh, did I feel like that was objectionably bad. Like it was just, okay, this is what we're doing. Let's go. <clears throat> so, I mean, I feel like I had a pretty good grasp on the whole, on on the whole time there. But um, yeah, the holidays are definitely making it crazy. Yeah, and then you know, like I said too, on top of it, I'm sick right now. I'm getting over another cold, and this one's whooping my ass, man. So you know, I'm just like waiting for the next few days to come and go, so that way I can get over this cold. And that's probably one of the things I struggle with the most is when I'm sick or my body physically feels like shit. It's like, how do I appreciate this experience? You know, like, how do I be present in this? Like, I just want to go to sleep and stay asleep until my cold is gone. And meanwhile, your body's fighting a war inside of it, trying exactly. to burn everything out. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, what I was going to say is you know, the past two weeks, you know, just being so caught up in my head. Um, when you and me first started talking in the first few episodes that we did, I was for the most part present the majority of the time. 
in these mm-hmm. past few weeks I just haven't been and I can see how it's affecting me again because at first it starts with you know um what's the word I'm looking for like kind of harmless thoughts where it's not really bad or anything it's not good they're just thoughts but you entertain them and then as that happens you slowly make your way back to all the negative thoughts it's just what the mind does it looks for problems to solve right so i found myself being a little bit more sad these past few weeks and i know why and it's because i'm not being present and i know how good feeling present is or being present is because of that feeling that you get you there's so many things that are happening so many things going on around you and to be completely unbothered unbothered by all of it but still experience it all but not letting it have any influence on you is such an amazing feeling and i know how to do it it just takes practice and it's still it's it's good to have these experiences where i I do get caught up in my head and i do get sad still because it's really humbling for me it's letting me know that you know i'm not a master at this craft i still have a lot of work to do and I'm going to keep doing it, but I need to be more on top of it and keep putting in constant effort 24 seven. So well, what are some uh, of the, no, Oh, no, go, go ahead. ahead. <clears throat> I was just going to ask you, what are some of the things that you do in your day to day that help you bring yourself closer to your reality in the moment? Well, um, really, I think the, the single best thing that I do is, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning <clears throat> is typically uh, write write into a note, and it's not really like a journal or or anything like that. It's just you know kind of what I'm thinking, and I just type in it for a while. And uh, I don't know, man. I think that kind of is like a little ritual for me now, and I just kind of emerge from that. Uh, it, it, it's so wild because I have so many things that I do in a day. But uh, I don't ever really have to plan them. And so I kind of just just go. And I made a, a lot of strides in my business area this week, actually. Um, I sat down and wrote a business plan out of nowhere. Like, I don't know who it was that, that <laughs> wrote that thing because it's a, it, it's a really solid, solid looking piece of work. But it doesn't feel like me, right? Um, but... I don't know. It's just, I've, I've been so like had so many knots before that had to be untied. And and now that those are done, like, and I still catch myself doing it though. When, uh, when I realize that I'm, you know, not being present and I'm thinking about the future, but that it doesn't have to change my day anymore. No, I usually find myself thinking more about the past than the future. And I think it's just because the past is a lot easier for me to envision because it did happen and the future hasn't happened yet. So my mind just isn't like the most creative, I guess. (laughs) But I think about like things that I would like to have, would like to see happen. But for the most part, it's just about my past. Right. And I I had a pretty good couple, uh, you know, times when I hung out with some really old friends over the the past week and I, I started telling them a bunch of this stuff, you know, like uh, being present and not wasting your time worrying about the future or, or the past because, you know, they're not there and all they do is cause confusion or anxiety either way. <clears throat> and dude, like it felt so good to like have all of those things to say and actually mean it. But on top of that, I think that's one of the things that kind of pulled me through a a long time as well because um you know being able to say it to someone and kind of watch the lights come on about how they thought about things before because i know they they had just gotten out of jail and treatment so they were uh you know really kind of stuck in a in a loop and i feel like that did a lot of good for that person so um it it just kind of i wrapped that whole thing in gratitude and i've just been pretty happy ever since uh, that's good man um so if someone were to ask you for advice on how to be 
more present in the moment and how to be closer to your reality instead of the illusion, what would be some like advice or tips that you would give them or me if I asked you? So I, I try to bring this whole thing back to some of these principles of Taoism and it's, it, it's not to try to be better, right? It's just to try to try to re- remember that like the second week when I called you on the phone and I said, what if you could do one thing well, you would want that thing to be that you do things well, right? And just kind of th- thinking about those kind of things kind of m- makes me remember what this is all about. And <clears throat> um, it just kind of pulls me into that. And then if you really ever want to um, just go outside, you know, um, going outside helps a lot. And uh, you, you said you guys got a lot of snow. Man, we haven't had any snow. Yet. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of snow. It was like a 25-minute drive over here that took an hour. It was a little frustrating, but I'd rather drive safe than get hurt, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, I would definitely... What's no, go ahead. I was going to say, um, one of, some of the things that I do that help me be really close to reality, and this is something that um, Eckhart Tolle talks about a lot, and that's like being really present and using your five senses to shift your awareness into the present moment. So like uh, just touching things or seeing things and hearing things, um, smelling things, you know, all that stuff. And I do that a lot. Like whenever I notice myself not being present, um, I shift my attention into one of my senses And I just try to hold it for as long as possible without another thought coming. And typically what happens is, is I'll have a thought come almost immediately with whatever I'm feeling or smelling or hearing or seeing. It's the immediate thought that comes to mind is a label of what it is that I'm sensing. And then what triggers from that is, oh, there was a thought. But that thought is also a thought. So then I go in the cycle of, (laughs) fuck, I need to stop thinking. And then I bring my awareness back to the present moment. And that's what, like, how it started for me until I realized that it's okay to have those thoughts, like those mental labels and stuff. Mm -hmm. You just let them come and let them go without entertaining them. But where I was messing up was I was entertaining those thoughts and getting in those cycles of, oh, damn it, I thought about something. And then that thought turns into another thought. And then it's just a, you know, like a dog chasing its tail. And well, I mean, yeah, I go ahead. You've got a, you've got a lot of stuff going on at the moment, you know, like uh, it's, and and that's one of the other things is you don't have to beat your, like, especially for myself. Like I don't need to uh, think that the whole day has gone to waste because I caught myself like not being in the moment. Right. Like it's not even thinking about it like that. It's, because there's no uh, good or bad side to that, right? Like um, sometimes you got to think about some stuff and when you catch yourself not being in the moment, there's, there, there doesn't have to be a, oh man, I wasn't, I wasn't being present. Darn it. it there, there doesn't have to be that side of it. Just, just shift and let it be done. And that, that works for me a lot. Like, cause I just don't label the, you know, outcome of the thing that I feel like I need to put myself into. Like, I, I just don't do that anymore. And that makes it almost automatic. So I, I couldn't even tell you how many times it happens, honestly. Like, I just, I noticed that I'm not. And so I use some of those things I talked about to kind of shift myself back and <clears throat> just keep going. Yeah, like, same thing with me, man. Like, I'm having constant shifts in my awareness like every few minutes all day long and it's not exhausting at all like at first it kind of was like trying to you know catch myself and reshift my awareness but once you you practice it 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 becomes habit and that habit starts to build and build and build and then um like before like i said man i would i would try and tap into my senses and then immediately have a thought that would spiral into more and more thoughts but now it's like when i have these senses it's, I have a thought, but like I said, I don't entertain it anymore. And I think it was really important what you said too, about, you know, you realize that you are caught in your thoughts and then you just shift your awareness, but you don't have to think, you know, continue thinking about 
right. oh damn, I wasn't present. You know, how, what can I do to be present now? Cause it's still mental activity that's keeping you out of the present moment. So yeah, I think what you said was really important, just shifting it and that's growth right there. Yeah. That is so much 100%. growth that <laughs> is. It's almost like the more you catch yourself doing it, maybe the better, right? Um, Cause you're doing it over and over. And whereas before you would only notice it like in a moment of clarity. Right. And, and so now it's like you, uh, you kind of just set the conditions for it and let it happen. Yeah, exactly. Like when I first started the spiritual path and I was first learning how to try and let go of my thoughts, um, like I said, it was just that constant battle. And then I finally just gave up and, you know, then I was only having those shifts in awareness like three times a day, like one in the morning, afternoon and at night where I was just trying to dedicate those times to be really present and just kind of starting from there. And I'm not saying that I recommend this at all. This is just what I did. I just had to find something that worked for me. And so carving out times in the day to just to focus on being present and then, you know, letting the mental activity, you know, do its thing in the times where I didn't have that dedicated time to. Um, just starting with that and then, you know, throughout my day, adding like four or five times or six times. And then just, it eventually evolved into me trying to practice it every chance that I could, or every chance that I noticed myself not being present. And there honestly, man, still sometimes like I'll have like an hour or two where I'm caught up in my head and then I catch it, you know, and I'm like, Oh fuck, man. All right. Mm-hmm. Present. I'm present now. But, well, you know, I think it's also important to, like, re- remember that this isn't any, like, mystic type of thing, right? Like, this is just training yourself to, to think better. And, it, it you know, starting out at it, you need to allow yourself to suck, right? And yeah. not beat yourself up over it. And then more importantly, start realizing that those those filters of suck or good or you know what makes one thing better like all of that is just you right just set that to the side and and then just kind of settle in and it it, i don't know man it's it feels like second nature to me now and i haven't had a bad day in a while yeah that's good man I I wouldn't say I've had a bad day either. I've definitely had some physically and mentally exhausting days, but I don't think I could (laughs) label any of them bad. (laughs) And I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to label them good either, you know. It's not necessary anymore. But, yeah. um, Also, I thought it was really important how you mentioned that. Shit, what was it? Oh, never mind. It just slipped my mind. (laughs) My brain's still a little foggy from trying to kick this cold. But if I remember, I'll bring it back up. <laughs> well, the so. the other thing I was going to touch on was at our last episode, which was non-dual consciousness, we kind of said this episode was going to be kind of an extension of that. And so there's something that I want <clears throat> to take a moment to kind of at least like clarify, right? Um, no there's a lot of different definitions of what non-dual consciousness is. And over the, over the two weeks, I kind of got to know someone who thinks in the, in the realm of like non-dual consciousness is essentially that we are all just manifested and nothing is going on. It's just happening. And, and there's no you, there's no me. And I just want to take a moment to like remember that it's Taoism kind of for a basis for this. Right. So it's rooted in seeing things in reality and what's there. And um, that's just like important to remember because I ended up having a, a pretty good conversation with a couple different people. And, you know, it, it comes down to, this is about what's here now and being being rooted in that because everything else is an illusion 
and, and honestly, like that, that just goes into my own uh, views about things from a, what they would consider their, their perspective. And this is, this is something that's just rooted in very simple physical reality. And you don't have to try to make it anything more than that for it to work, which is one of the reasons it, it seems to catch on so fast. <clears throat> Yeah, um, one thing that I, I think is kind of important to mention is, like, I know we talk about Taoism a lot and touch on Buddhism, too, but um, just for anyone listening, we're not, we don't align with those specific religions and claim to be, like, Taoists or Buddhists or anything. Those religions just have had the most impact on us, and we still use, you know, them as sources just like we use other well, religions or non-religions as tools they're they're the most relevant way to communicate what we're talking about exactly and that's the best way to put it yeah right because <clears throat> you know this is just seeing things for what they are and you know like it doesn't fit into any, any one thing and so I don't know. It's just don't try to make this anything more than it isn't. Or if it is, that's fine. That's, you know, if that works for you, but this is about getting better every day and remembering how to be focused on experiencing the moment. <clears throat> yeah, I and agree. One of the best ways I conceptualize that is I, I wrote a little thing in a note about, um, you know, when you're, <clears throat> you're not just like in a, in your environment, like you were part of your environment. And when you shift your, your, uh, you know, awareness to kind of take in all of that and, and make it match your environment and thinking about it like that, mainly like it's not that that's what it is, is finding ways to think about these things that kind of pull you right back to it conceptually. Yeah. And that what you just said just kind of reminded me of something too. And it's, it's, it's honestly pretty funny. Like when I'm at work, that's when I most get caught up in my head just because I just don't like being at work, you know? Um, well, at least that's how I used to feel. Now I don't mind it as much anymore. But one thing that I noticed is, like there's so much in our present moment to be aware of that it's really hard to be aware of everything, you know, like the sounds and the smell of things, the feel of the air, the feeling of the ground or the couch or, um, you know, what you're seeing, like to listen to them all in really great detail is pretty hard, you know, like. I've only been able to keep one of my senses really focused very well to see things more clearly, but I can't do multiple. Um, yeah, it is something that I'm working on, but like, you know, looking at the textures of the walls and stuff and the texture of the carpet and to be fully aware of that, of what it is, and then be fully aware of everything that I'm feeling physically and hearing too. It's really hard. <laughs> you know, I didn't realize how much is actually happening around us that we just tune out because we're we're thinking all the time you know right about what we're doing and where we're going <clears throat> yeah and then when i was at work you know for a long time too i was like oh, i need something more stimulating like you know physical labor isn't fun it's just like i need something to challenge my brain and stuff you know like work is just so boring and you know i felt that way about like a lot of places too like the doctor's office and like waiting at the DMV to get a new license. Like I just thought that shit was so fucking boring until like I had that shift in awareness and pretty much like now, wherever I go, if I can tap into that and shift my awareness, like I can have a lot of fun, you know, just looking yeah. at shit, feeling shit, you know? And it's nice to actually interact with people. That's one of the, the things I've gotten out of this from being so much, uh, you know, just more cheerful is I, I look people straight in the face when I see them and, and, you know, I ask them how they're doing and I actually, you know, listen to what they say. And sometimes we have a discussion. Sometimes we don't, you know, 
Um, but I'm definitely way more positive in public, which is, uh, just what it is, you know, it, it's, it makes it more pleasurable to do things like go to the gas station or go get groceries, you know, or go stand in line at the DMV. Cause maybe we'll just start talking to somebody and that's because, you know, you kind of consider more. Yeah, no, I agree. I'd definitely say like one of my favorite uh, fruits from being on the spiritual path or whatever you want to call it is that connected feeling I have with people again, because for such a long time, you know, all my problems, I, I used to be a externalist, so I would just blame, you know, other people or other things for my problems. So I became really resentful towards people regardless if they've ever done anything to me or not, I just didn't want to be around them just because I had the expectation of them to let me down. And so I just didn't talk to anybody. I was really introverted. I just stayed inside all day. And now that, you know, like I said, I've been on the spiritual path again and I feel more connected to my environment and I feel more connected to people. I have so much fun going outside. Cause like you said, you know, you could just chat it up with someone and it's, it's such a good feeling to not, hold that resentment anymore you know and it's not exhausting anymore and it's well i used to such a i used to have these swings where i would kind of experience that uh long before this right and it was it was really just me kind of overcompensating for one kind of individual experience and then you know doing the opposite of that and that led to you know these brief moments when maybe i'm actually joyful to be around when i'm in public but but now it's like it doesn't take a, you know, a, a reflex from another experience to to trigger that. Now it's just a natural state. You know, it doesn't have to. <clears throat> it, it remembering that there's a flow with the way nature and and all of that goes as well helps a lot. Yeah, because it's to an extent it's like just read the room, right? Just and. That can be any given situation. Yeah, for real. Um, Yeah, I think definitely like being more aware and going into an environment and being able to kind of read the room a little bit is definitely very helpful, you know, because it kind of, it's not that you need to like mentally prepare for anything, you know, as you're going in, but it's just like, having that awareness just to to be aware of what's going on. So that way, you know, if someone's an asshole or, you know, if you go to the bar and someone's drunk or whatever, or someone's really nice, it doesn't influence you in any way. And it helps you be more present too, because you're not in your head about, you know, what's this person going to do? What's that person going to do or whatever? Or am I going to like being here? Am I not going to like being here? Yeah. It's Mm. just, it's as good as anywhere. (laughs) Although I definitely am more comfortable at home, I'll still say that. But, but anyway, uh, it's that uh, that sense of like presence of mind, where it's like I don't know, just just to kind of rant for a bit. I I I feel like the the quality of the energy that I feel now is, is like consciousness. Right. And then I have an awareness that, because that's basically my life force. Right. And, and so then when I think about how I conceptualize everything around me in my environment, that's a a awareness as a, as another thing. And I don't know. It's just interesting how that kind of comes about. Yeah. Um, no, I like what you said about, you know, you're still feeling more comfortable at home. I definitely like to stay in a lot still, but it doesn't bother me anymore if I do go out or if I do have to go run errands or do chores or whatever. So, but yeah, I don't know. It's just something about having, you know, nothing really disrupting your awareness. But I I guess that also just takes practice, you know? (laughs) So maybe it is good to go out more to have those challenges. Yeah, but also... uh, Just not having a a preconceived my day needs to go well 
these five minutes need to go well. I just need to, you know, keep living my life. And it's also really beneficial because if you look at yourself honestly and you see that there's something that you want to change in your life, it becomes very obvious how to do that, right? Yeah. Um, you, you don't think that you can do it another way to satisfy your ego and make yourself feel better, right? It's this is something I want to improve. This is how you improve it. Let's do that. That's it. Right. And I've made leaps and bounds in that area uh, recently <clears throat> because you start to see, you know, what, what actually in my life could be better and what would I need to do to achieve that. And you can either choose to take that thought and do something about it or, you know, but I have, the, I have thoughts like that a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> about you know are my actions leading like in line with my intentions and i think they just naturally are no yeah. and using your your brain to try and think about it and definitely i can see how you know it would slow you down a bit um i definitely you know i'd say i you know i kind of struggle with the same thing where something's like like the other day, actually, me and my brother, we were playing video games and listening to music. It was a few days before I got sick, and I was just so happy. And I was like, "How can we make this day better? Do you want to grab like a few beers or something, or make something good to eat?" <laughs> and you know, it was that. Even though it was a brief, you know, very brief thought, it took me out of the moment because I'm thinking about how I could make it better instead of just being in that moment. And I'm going to experience it as frequently as I can. And uh, another thing that I wanted to touch on too was like something that I've really been practicing when it comes to like the five senses is like, for example, with sound, you know, trying to not just hear it, but to like feel it as it's coming out, like almost like you're at a concert, you know, and you can feel that loud bass in your chest. I also like position it. Like I, I know where it is. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we had said something to each other about if you're not there to experience the, the sound made from the, you know, the thing that you're hearing, then everything is just vibrating anyway. And that, that just, you know, there's something about about just being yeah. there that that changes the nature of what you're here, what you're experiencing. Yeah, and, for real. You know that never that never made sense to me up until recently. Like you know, sound and taste not being sound and taste until someone experiences it as sound and yep. taste, and. Um, I tried to wrap my, my head around that for a while. And then it was when I stopped trying to wrap my head around it is when I actually kind of got it. Well, that's uh, a, a, a great way to point to this non-dual thing. And it's, you know, there's, there's no that in its opposite. There's no, like the thing you're shifting from is a, is a, a thinking that's dualistic, which is everything has, you know, this in its opposite. And when that no longer becomes the case and you kind of realize things are just the way they are, um, that kind of falls into place and you just naturally start thinking in, in higher quality. Yeah, I, I agree. Like when you learn how to stop or when you start practicing non-dual and you practice not thinking in a dualistic headspace or thinking at all. That's where I've had some of like my most profound experiences of like insight and things that just click, you know, and things that wouldn't click or occur to me if I was sitting there in my thoughts trying to figure it out because, you know, it's just not something that the brain can wrap its head around or the thoughts can even understand or conceptualize. That's one of the benefits from doing the show in a direct sense, because 
these are topics that we that we deal with and part of what we're doing here is when we lay all this out and kind of comb through it is this is going to be our approach with this thing in in the future and so you don't have to think about it anymore and you know we're a lot better at dealing with negative thoughts now like we we know what to do and we do the things we talked about and it works right we don't yeah. we don't have to sit and spend time trying to remember how to do that thing that's going to help with the way I'm feeling right now. You know, that, yeah. that just simply does not exist. And that's the single biggest thing for me that's come out of this. Yeah. I would definitely say like this journey and learning all of these teachings and everything has been so impactful in my life. Like I probably wouldn't be here if I didn't find the spiritual journey, just be honest. Um, when I was, what was it? When I was like 19, kind of what like really started everything for me was from the time I was like 13 to like, you know, 18 when I was like developing and stuff and kind of learning shit. Um, I only had about like what within that five years of knots to untie. But then when I was 19, I, was doing molly for like what was it two three times a week every day <laughs> for like a month or two and then there was one night where i did like 13 points of molly and then did ecstasy and coke and we were up for like 48 hours something crazy <laughs> like that you know just partying all day and it was after that one where when I got home and I like came down and stuff and I was coming back from rolling, I was just put in this severe depressive episode and um, anxiety and it was just horrible. Right. And I struggled with it for honestly still now, you know, I f definitely feel like I fried something up top and what actually happened was, is I was, I got in like drug induced psychosis um, where I was like hearing shit in my head and, you know, I was paranoid about people and my anxiety was so bad. I couldn't even work. I'd just, you know, curl up in a ball in my bed and just lay there and just cry for hours. And I just couldn't stop. But one thing that I did do, and it was actually my brother that pointed this out is like when I was sad and I was having those severe anxiety attacks, like one thing that I would do is I would like put on you know sad music or like look at old photos that made me sad and it was like it was the one thing that i did have control over you know was like how sad i can be that was the only thing i felt like i was in control of and that's why that felt so addicting and you know i that went on for up until like this year <laughs> um just dealing with that you know like i that was like the last time i ever did drugs um but um, actually like a year after that, I was drinking a little bit, but for the most part, I completely, you know, did that 180, started going to the gym, eating a healthy diet, but kind of what happened was, is like bipolar disorder runs in my family and I got diagnosed by a couple doctors. I still don't know how to feel about it. If it's just like my brain still recovering from all those drugs I did four years ago or almost five now, or if, you know, it did kind of just kick up that bipolar that's you know in my dna for my family it's like damn near everyone has it but you know feeling like i still get these consistent mood swings and stuff it has helped so much being on this journey because like i get like these happy and sad episodes and they don't influence me at all anymore you know i can just feel them and let them be because i don't have any control over them you know they just are as they are and it can be a little exhausting at times but i would say like having uh, mood shift disorder or whatever um, has helped. It's been a useful tool for me in catching my negative thoughts and being really present or catching happy thoughts and not getting too excited anymore and, you know, learning to check myself and not make dumb decisions. And yeah. Well, over, I mean, the, uh, over the last year I was taken to a, uh, like, like a mental hospital three different times for psychosis. Um, and 
I, I think that's wh- whatever. I think I was just having a flashback, honestly. Like I don't, I don't think I was anything crazy or anything like that. But um, yeah, sorry if that triggered you or anyone listening. No, no, I, I was just thinking about it because the thing that I kind of th- pulled out of that is all of this stuff is what happens when you just get wrapped up too much in your head. And this is a a direct release for that. And it's a reminder to, to not even engage in that because it's everything past that point is not totally real. And just the way that you put yourself and project yourself, you know, your wants and your needs and go down that whole road again. Um, because that can happen very quickly, right? You start deeming uh, a situation you're in undesirable and you can just very quickly cascade into that whole painting. Everything is uh, where you're at on your way to where you're going and, and thinking about that whole thing that we kind of shifted away from. And it seems like this is just a pretty good release for that. Yeah, no, it is for sure. <clears throat> Oof. Yeah, I, uh, I was also like, I think like, man, I've just been in some shit for so long. Like when I was like 14, you know, that's when I started smoking weed and I was taking Adderall almost every day because my friend would just give it to me. So I just spend my lunch money on it. So, you know, for my teenage years, I was, you know, taking 32 milligram Adderalls that I didn't need to be taking and I'll take like multiple at a time, you know, and I definitely think that that had an influence on the way that my brain developed too. And then when I did get diagnosed with bipolar, I had to be prescribed like antipsychotics and then I had to be prescribed like antidepressants and any anxiety meds and stuff. And then I was on those for a while too. And it was horrible, man. Like, you know, I was still going to the gym at the time when I started them. And it got to the point where I'd sleep like 13, 14 days an hour, uh, 14 hours a day. And I just couldn't even go to the gym anymore. So I was so tired. I only had enough energy to get up and barely get up and then go to work and then go back home and go straight to sleep. You know, do, I felt like a still, zombie. Do you still, do you still take any of those mental health pills? Nope. I haven't for about two years now. Same here, man. Um, it's awesome. I'm proud of you. It, it you know, it's, There was a point when maybe you think that stuff will help, but I mean, your body knows what it's doing. All it, all you need to do is just see, listen to it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's just uh, the natural way to be, I guess. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I stopped taking those and, I w- I honestly almost started about taking them again, but that was before, you know, we started talking and, you know, started this podcast and really diving into spirituality and just learning and just existing. And now, yeah. you know, I definitely feel like I can do all of this and I can do anything as long as I keep no attachment and no desires and I just be present and everything will work out. And the path to where you want to go is just that, right? Getting there isn't, isn't what you're concerned about. Yeah. You're you're concerned about the next step you take. Once you reach that end of the path, it's kind of funny actually, because you realize that there isn't a path. There's no path in front of you or behind you. You're just there. Because the path is just what you want to be better out of shifting into this, this whole way of thinking and all of that just sorts to starts to melt away. Yeah. And um, another thing that I wanted to mention to you, just for anyone listening that has been thinking about taking like, you know, any depressants or any anxiety meds or therapy, I highly recommend if you need the help to do that. Um, I did for a little bit and it just, I probably should have gone more than I did. I just did it. But it's okay to have help from others and to, you know, have a little kickstart with 
you know, relieving some of that anxiety or depression. I personally, I wouldn't stay on them forever because there is a way out. At least that's how I feel, you know, and that's one of those ways out is a spiritual journey. I'm not sure if there's any others because everything else I've tried never worked. So if there is anything um, in our Reddit page, you know, let me know what you've done to cope with uh, anxiety and depression that isn't alcohol or drugs or spirituality. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's important if you need it to get that help in the beginning to help get you on your feet. And then when you're ready, you know, move on from them and continue living like you or were just, meant to. Or just at least reach out and talk to somebody. Yeah, uh, always. You know, one of the things I tell people a lot is uh, drink water, do some exercise, and do something for somebody else. And a lot of times that'll just kind of pull you back into, you know, things are actually not good or bad. And yeah, because I see a lot of people have issues like that. And you know, everything we talk about is, is ways that will improve your life when you do them. Right. And it just seems, why would you want it to be any way, any way different? Yeah. I, I like those three, you know, like do something for yourself, you know, exercise, water, do something for somebody else. And then what was the other one? Uh, it was just those three. Drink oh, water, okay. exercise. And do something for somebody else. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, it, t- it takes you out of yourself too, you know? Yeah. There, there's there's a real thing that happens when you become someone who does nice things, right? Dude, the, the fruits you get for doing that is fucking amazing, man. Like, you know, I ever since I started the spiritual journey, like, So these are the, like the top three things that I focus on every day. And I know I've mentioned this to you. It's humility, compassion, and gratitude. Those are like my, my main three that I focus on. And, you know, just practicing that compassion part alone has brought so much joy into my life because, you know, being that for somebody else, being a compassionate person for somebody else, people naturally just almost want to do it to you. You know, they want to reciprocate that back to you and it's because it's compassion is a natural feeling that we feel for others and that we feel for you know our environment and everything we just feel we're loving beings that's what consciousness is right that's an expression of it so you well, know getting that what's that's the best way to just come off come off naturally because yeah it's the it's just the way to be because <clears throat> um being Acting with compassion is the only reason you wouldn't do that is if you were projecting some of the negative ways you think about yourself to other people, right? And we 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 do that a lot more than we think we do. Yeah. Yeah, I uh there's being compassionate towards other I think it's really important to mention too you know, being compassionate to others without the intention of receiving something, you know, because like there are times when I'm, when I'm compassionate to someone or, you know, I show love to somebody or help them with something and they don't reciprocate it back. I don't get like bitter or upset about it or, you know, I wasn't expecting them to do something because it doesn't happen all the time, you know, but for the people that do reciprocate it, it's just a good feeling to have. It's not like an attachment or desire to, feeling that love from other people. It's just acts of service, just be out of the kindness of your heart, you know? And then my other two, like was gratitude and oh, it's just being grateful for like the moment and my senses and the experiences I'm able to perceive that just helps me be present. And then humility, because that helps keep my ego in check. So when someone says, you know, something that I don't, particularly align with or resonate with it's okay if i feel an emotion towards that but i can practice humility and show an interest on why they feel the way that they do and 
you know, not have to push my side unless they're open to hearing about it. Cause a lot of times people aren't open to hearing what you have to say. Right. Um, <laughs> and you know, you can't just be like, okay, well, can I tell you how I feel? Because you know, most people are just going to say, yeah, out of kindness, you know, like if someone wants to know how I feel, I just wait for them to ask, you know? <laughs> right. And that, that's a, a thing I used to do a lot too was, uh, feel like I needed to add words to a conversation that really didn't need to be added at all. Right. To, yeah. Or just insecurities I have about myself and now none of that exists. And so my conversations with people are so much more genuine because there's no filler crap to cover up the way that I think I feel. Yeah. It's when I, when I was going, when I was like going through my shit and, you know, I was, you know, my friends were helping support me and family and new people I was meeting at like new work environments and stuff. Like I slowly saw people start to like, you know, start creating that space between us and our friendship. And I realized it was because of, you know, the way I was behaving. But once I shift my awareness into, you know, those three things, like the present moment, um, gratitude, humility, and compassion, um, like people naturally, I wouldn't say they gravitate towards me, but for the most part, they, yeah, they enjoy being around me. And I only say that just because like the physical, you know, the expressions they have on their face and their laughter. I feel like that's a good indicator. I know everybody isn't going to like me. It's whatever, but I definitely have more smiles and more jokes and more laughter around me than I used to. And I feel like that's a good indicator. Yeah. You know, the, for the most part, these, uh, these interactions are, you know, things we do every day and just experiencing every day better. It, 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 it kind of like radiates a, a positivity that people just seem to respond to well. Right. Yeah. Um, Cause it turns out it's pretty cheerful just to live your life. Yeah. Right. Who would have thought, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's so nice. Like I said, being connected again with people, you know, cause for so long I just held that resentment. Now I have like people asking me to go out with them, you know, like to the bar to grab a drink or grab lunch. And, you know, I didn't have that for a long time and I was so mad at people for not doing that, but I would also take it out on them, you know? <laughs> so I just pushed them away even further. But now that I let that go and, you know, some of them I did lose, you know, for good, unfortunately, like some of those people don't want to be my friend anymore and that's okay. You know, I hope they're able to, you know, shift their awareness into compassion and love and maybe they have, you know, maybe they just need to keep space from me because they feel like I might hurt them again and that's okay. You know, I've come to terms with that, but you know, there are people that I did have, you know, genuine conversations with and apologize for my behavior. And, you know, we have such a stronger friendship now and it's amazing, but I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't present in the moment. I wasn't, you know, humble. I wasn't grateful. And if I was egotistical, it's the reason you don't just say the hell with the whole thing anymore. And you know, back to the, you know, this isn't something like magical or that we're pulling out of our ass here. Like, this is just, you can do this. Everyone can do this. Like there's nothing that makes this not possible. And if you feel like you've thought in some of the ways we've talked before, um, you know, maybe just try Try just even being more present and whatever that means, right? Yeah. And see if your life runs better. (laughs) Yeah. You're not not gonna lose anything by trying. Right. (laughs) Um with that, do you uh I feel like we covered a good good episode with that. Do you have uh anything else you think you'd like to add? Um All right. Well, uh, yeah. what should we do for next next week's topic? That, that's what I was sitting here thinking, and I think we should get back to some of these problems we have to deal with. 
Yeah. So um, what would be a, a good one? Well, one thing that I've been, you know, kind of working on, it hasn't been one of my focuses, but I would love to focus on it more for this week, is um, being a teacher and being a student and learning when the right time to do that is, uh, you know, like knowing the appropriate time because you're not always meant to be a teacher. You're not always meant to be a student. You know, there's shifts in that, I believe, because there are times where you will be helping somebody and it's a, you know, a learning moment for them. And there are times where you have to learn from other people or your environment and right. you have to be able to make that call. Right. And there's still so many things, you know, that I'm working on learning from, you know, like um, birds and cats and like animals are amazing teachers, you know? And there was, there was this story. I'm probably going to butcher it cause I haven't heard it in a long time. I only heard it once actually, but there was this, uh, it was a squirrel that was being chased by a cat and then a crow started chasing the cat. And then a farmer went to go watch what's happening. And <laughs> he, what he noticed was the farmer, as you know, these animals were chasing each other, the cat was completely oblivious to everything else that was happening. Its only focus was the squirrel. And the bird was up top you know, watching, probably having a little bit more awareness of everything going on around it. So I feel like birds kind of naturally are pretty aware. <laughs> and then, you know, the farmer going to watch them, he noticed all of them, you know, playing, uh, not being mindful and not being aware, except for very specific things. And he thought that he was being aware. But as he was walking to follow them, he stepped on um, these vegetables that he was growing because he wasn't paying attention. No, 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 no. He walked into someone else's farm and I think like destroyed their crops or something because he wasn't being mindful of himself. He was only being mindful of others. And it's important to do both, you know? And I feel like that ties into being a teacher and a student because in that experience, you're learning from your environment. Well, the, the thing I kind of take away from it is, uh, you know, also social interactions, right? Like how should you act when you're playing either one of those roles, right? Um, if you're a, a student, I would imagine you would want to be coming from a place of humility and the, in the moments that you're a teacher, you know, you want to be kind and present things in a way that people are going to actually – grasp yeah so for sure i think that's a pretty good topic for next week cool we will roll with that then being a teacher and a student all right thanks guys we'll see you next week